you're you're choosing the right reasons and um, you're making the right you're making the right choice. So um, back to your question about what schools, um, Ohio State was hitting me up, Tennessee, where you know they were trying to come see me. Um, I don't even think you could do that. I don't know, but mm -hmm. but they're just like they're they're every school was trying to do everything they had to you know try try to make the last push or yeah. Which coaches did you talk to in those final days? Um, final day coaches, um, Coach Fry, uh, can't forget Alabama. Me and Wolf Wolf came to my school. Um, we had a long and depth conversation. Almost flipped there. That, yeah, <laughs> there was a lot going on at the time. Um, so yeah, I want to say uh, Coach Fry, Coach Wolf, um, Tennessee, Coach Hype, um, Oregon for sure. Oregon, Oregon hit me up, and then uh, kind of like later in the mix, uh, you know, just Nebraska, you know, their staff and uh, Rayola. Yeah, Rayola reaching out to yeah. you there. What, what, what was his pitch? Um, he was just kind of say like, you know, like just like make history. So I'm like, make history. I can make history at Colorado, you know. So it's just like, I kind of get where you're coming from, you know. He got a, you know family background, so his his decision was kind of made his different, but. Um, for me, for me, my minds was like, you know, Coach Prime. Like anybody I want to train with, like I'm about to train in Dallas. I'm about to go to Dallas and train with training them. So the the amount of connections that I have and the amount of access to people that have done it is unbelievable. And you know, I can It's about who you know, not what you know nowadays. You've talked to me a lot about the possibility of working with Trent Williams. You've had yeah. contact with him in the past. What is that setup going to look like going forward? Um, I'm going to be more of like a um mentor kind of you know just being able to critique my game and and not only him but coach fry i still talk to coach fry from this day um just you know like just sending me clips about what he's doing he still wants clips to see how the ua game ua game is going to go and you know you know it's always love for ohio state you talk about the relationship with, with coach prime yeah. um you had some other great coaches recruiting you what about the relationship with coach prime put them over you know Ohio State, Alabama, or schools that are more traditionally associated with five-star offensive teams. Yeah. Um, the relationship with Coach Prime is it's kind of amazing to have. You know, like the amount of time that we had wasn't a lot of a lot of time, but the amount of time we spent and the how we spent it to, to, with each other kind of like made the big difference for me. Um, for example, it was my mother's birthday, and it was only two schools that said um, happy birthday to my mother, and Colorado was one of them. So, you know, like, just little things like that. Like, I never told them. I never – I don't even let my mom be in my recruiting process because it's weird nowadays. So just, like, little things like that, like, that stood out to me because, like, it's more like, oh, he cares about me first, like, regardless of, like, how good I am or how good I could be or – you know, like stuff like that. You know, sometimes you go to these big programs and, you know, for every Evan Neal, there's another five-star who, hey, what, what does he do now? Or Is that the biggest difference you notice with, with Coach Dion? Like the, the personable nature? I mean, you're talking about Coach Day and Nick Saban. Yes. And Dan, these are great recruiting yeah, great great. coaches, but it seems like Coach Dion is just a little more personable with you. He's he's really about the person first. That's, that's kind of... That's really why I chose him. He's about you. He's about the person first. And he wants to develop you into a man. And for my mom, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. Just, you know, like just being a man and just knowing that, like, whatever you say, like you stand on that, like just little like principal things. So that kind of stood out to me the most in my recruitment process. You waited a little bit to sign, yeah. create a little bit of drama. Yeah. What was kind of the, the what was really the reason why you, you elected to wait and obviously weigh, weigh some of your options down the stretch? Just make sure make sure that that decision that I was making was the right one, because once I signed that paper, there's no going back. Like you cannot go back. I think very few people have signed a paper and been able to go back. So um, just making sure I made the right decision, you know, dot my, uh, you know, cross my X's, dot my T's. Or I, was, I think I said it wrong. I don't know the same. <laughs> Still a young guy, but uh, you know, things like that. Just making sure I made the right decision and I felt comfortable about it. Troy, so who was second for you? Who was the school other than Colorado? As a very good question. Um, <laughs> Bam or Tennessee. Bam or Tennessee. Was Maryland even in it at the end? There was all this talk about the Terps, you know, trying to flip you at the 11th hour with Coach Loxley doing what he does with the MV guys. Was Maryland really a contender there? Maryland definitely had a real, like, a good, real shot. But sometimes it's like, like, 
is staying home the best thing for me? Because you know, like when I went to IMG, it was strictly just football, like just about my business. I'm able to just work on my craft and get better. And then it's like, what if I did that in the college level, go away, work on my craft and do the same thing I did at IMG at another program? So it's like little things like that. I was just like, I think that's the best thing for me personally. When did you actually sign your paperwork? Was it on Wednesday and then you waited to send it in or was it actually um, on Friday? And then so I signed, I actually signed the first day they got it to me, which was, that was Wednesday morning, right? So I actually signed Wednesday morning, but I didn't, I didn't send nothing. I didn't say nothing. What did Dion say to you that said, you know, this could actually be something, you know? Um, like from, like, like during recruiting. Oh, 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 okay. Um, his thing was he needs linemen, and he's gonna get the like the development part. He's gonna get me in, like the whole offensive line group. We're gonna be able to, like I said before, get in touch with everybody who knows about this stuff. Big Willie, um, Duke Waymeather over there in Dallas, um, like. All those guys who train guys like that, he can get us in contact with to make our game get developed by, you know, better. But also, um, also like, I, 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 hold on. Also, um, thank you. Uh, the development within like, you know, everyday school life, that's what most people are telling me. Like, even though you can go to all these trainers, what about every day when you're with the coach, every day? Well, Phil Loha, I might say his name wrong, but Coach Phil, he done it at every level. OU, coached by Bill B. Everybody say Bill B the best. He got coached by Bill B in 12-year vet. So it's like, everybody says his first year of coaching, but I feel like he knows what he's talking about. Or the, Coach Prime would have hired him. Were there schools negatively recruiting against Deion saying he's not serious? What, what was said to you during that, especially at the, down the stretch? They were saying, uh, this is the most famous one I got. It was like, uh, what, what do you want to be a rapper or something? Like I'm like, hey, <laughs> I get what you're saying, but Bro, it's, it was a lot of negative recruiting about him. I feel like um, some people don't understand that he's only had, he only been there for about what, like, has it been a year yet? Yeah, like a year. It's been a Basically. year. Like, the turnaround that that program had from 1 and 11 to where they went, 5 and 6, 5 and 6, four like eight. 4 and 8, 4 and 8, yeah. yeah. To, to that, it's like, cool. Like, you see it, like, for example, uh, like Coach Naper and them staff, they've been, how long they've been there? This is their second year. Second year. Same thing, like, you got to take some time. Like, Alabama was in Bama in, in six months. It takes time. Like, you know, like, just give it, like, a year, another year, maybe two years. And that, that's going to be a real program that everybody's going to want to go to. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with Shador? He was there on Friday when you sent in your, yeah. your stuff. You were in Miami doing some shopping, and you got this whole YouTube channel set up with him. Yeah. What uh, What's your relationship like with Shador? Um, so... Me and Shador, we locked in. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, I did something with Hayes Foss. We did like an IG live, and then he was asking me like, what's our relationship? And then uh, Shador was like, yeah, just troll him. Tell him we're not friends and stuff like that. But like, we're really close. Me, him, uh, Bucky, if y'all know uh, the older brother, like all of us, we're like, we're like a trio. So like, we fit together. Um, and you know, having a guy like that, he kind of he kind of brings the quarterback knowledge to me of like off the field, like how to carry myself, um, like, I just really, I just really, I just really like the uh, the Sanders family. Like they, they're just trying to pour all the knowledge that they have into me, and also everybody around me, which is like my offensive line, quarterback, receivers. Everybody's coming in. They just want to pour knowledge, and you don't really get that in a lot of different places. How much was that watch? Um, it was a gift. <laughs> yes, sir. It was a gift. But this is really nice. You know what they say? Like sit there. <laughs> yes, sir. Only the hard hitting questions that matter. Paul, did you already answer this one? Um, do they say uh, scheme wise? Do they want to come in and play right now? Left tackle, right tackle, schematically? What are they, what are they telling you right um, now? Right now, I am projected to be a left tackle. Nothing is going to be given to me. Um, like his thing is the spot is there, but I still have to go and take it. You know. You'll be there for spring ball. Yes, I'll okay. be there for spring ball. I actually enroll. I'll be there on the 14th. Okay. So if I ever, you know, come down, or you know, if you got rivals, people in Colorado, just come down. Show a good time. And chill. We'll be there. We'll talk. January 14th. Yeah, January 14th. So about a week and a half from today, maybe a week and a half, two weeks, maybe. Yeah. Two, yeah. A couple weeks. Yeah. You mentioned. Uh, you mentioned. <coughs> excuse me, Coach Napier. What was his pitch to you, and was Florida ever seriously in it at the end? Or? My relationship with Coach Naper is real. Um, Rob Sal, Stapleton, Coach Stapleton, great group of guys. Um, my thing was, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to do my like do my own thing and just be like the first, you know. I kind of just wanted to, you know, like go my own route and kind of bet on myself. 
Because regardless of where you go, I feel like I'm a lineman. They're, they're going to find you. Everybody says they're going to find you. So the hard work, if I put the hard work in, keep my nose clean, do all the things that I've been doing like I've been at IMG, everything is going to be, you know, go A-OK -okay for me. It's going to be like, um, it's not going to be like, you know, straight shot easy, like, but, you know, good, good things, good things happen. During the process, you kind of, even, even, even the fact that you took two visits to Colorado during the process, after that, you didn't really speak too highly of Colorado from then until basically when you committed. Yeah. Was that, well, that was premeditated, right? That was a cognizant decision, like, you um, decided to, to keep them in the dark a little bit. Yeah, I definitely decided to keep them in the dark. Um, but I didn't really know that I wanted to go there until it's like, I thought and I, and I, and I, like, I had a drawing board where it's like pros, cons, and like, you know, like similarities of both schools. So when I'm looking at it, I'm like, I can do everything at these bit schools right here in Colorado. So it's like, why not? Why not just bet on myself? And I feel like when you take that risk and you just put it all on yourself, you better yourself, like, it feels better once you get to the end and you accomplish that goal. Like, it just, it just feels different. Like, it just feels different. When you, I guess, you've already stood up this whole YouTube channel and everything. Yeah. It's got, you know, a couple thousand subscribers yeah. already. The fact that Colorado helped you stand that up so quickly, was that part of the recruiting pitch or was that something that you decided to do after Um, No, nah, I actually, when, when we went to Miami, um, he was like, hey, why not just start a YouTube channel? Like, cause like, he was like, bro, you're you're more harder right now. Like, you and Shador are like the hottest topic right now. So I'm like, if you started, like, I don't know nothing about YouTube. Like, I don't know how that works. Like, monetization and stuff like that. That's Bucky's job. Um, but you know, just once I did it, it's like, all right, this this is something fun. Like, it's cool. So I'm just gonna start doing it, see how it goes, and you know, you guys should subscribe to my channel, <laughs> Big Time 77. <laughs> You mentioned that you wanted to make sure you were making the right decision before you sent in the letter. Yes, ma'am. What, what was your clarity moment in those 48 hours? Um, my clarity was like, for me, it was like, like I kind of said before, like, who wants, who really cares about me? Who really cares about me? And then, as you know, my uncle, Khalil, um, we're talking and we're like, so like, just the little things, like, who, like, it was like, who, who said happy birthday to my mom? Like, who knows my mom's name? So I, 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 this is what I did. You can ask them. I called every coach. I was like, "Hey, uh, what's my mom's name?" You called the coaches who were yeah. you? Yeah, because I, I keep, I like to keep my family out of it, just because it's like one school might try to pull this way and be like, "Hey, da 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 da, -da get him to do this and that like that." And I didn't want no like, um, you know, outsiders like, you know, messing up the inside circle. So I keep my circle tight. Me and Khalil, he handles all that. So just just the little things like knowing like my mom's birthday, knowing what school my little brother goes to, like even though like probably you can probably I don't think you can search it up, but just the little things for me kind of made the big difference. And not asking me like, uh, hey man, am I bothering you too much and stuff like that? It's like bro, like we could talk, like it's cool. <laughs> like when you try to be too perfect, I feel like it's like when I get there, it's not going to be like that because they're trying to impress too much. Because you didn't have Colorado in your top six originally. I did, did not. Was that uh, like trolling or just like you originally just didn't know? I didn't. Okay. I was like, I always liked them. Yeah. But I was like, like Big 12, I want to play in the SEC kind of. Because I, I like competition like makes me like, I don't know. I feel like I do better when it's like great competition. I don't know. I like it. Um, But Big 12 got good comp, a lot of good, great pass rushers. I love pass pro. So kind of just looking at it from that aspect, it's kind of like, all right. No, I can do this. I feel like I can be here. You might have already answered. I'm, I was late. Um, who, was your, who was your number two? Did it come down to Colorado and? It was um, actually Bama and Tennessee. Okay. Those two were kind of tied. for. They're tied at two. Um, a runner up besides that, Ohio State for sure. Okay. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Ohio State for sure. And you said you did sign that Wednesday. And you, I signed. Yeah, I, I, signed on, I signed on Wednesday. Okay. Um, I announced Friday evening. So, again, I'm I'm sorry, what was the, the reason for the delay, just for the fun of it, just to create a little? Nah, just making sure that that decision I made was the right one. Because okay. once you put pen to paper sure. and you submit it over, like, hey, you're a buff. Okay. <laughs> or you're, 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 you're a gator, you're whatever yeah. it is, you know? Um, so I just making sure that like once I signed it and I really felt okay with what I was doing and felt comfortable with that, 
because I don't want to make a you know indecisive decision yeah. and then go back and like oh now I'm in the transfer portal like hey let me get an edit rivals or you know like stuff like that <laughs> and see so it was cool about not releasing it until you yeah. gave them the final word which yeah. came on Friday yes sir okay. awesome appreciate you man so your letter went in on Friday yes it okay. went in on Friday oh so you signed Wednesday but yeah. you sent it in on Friday yes got okay it. got okay. it all right you mentioned the transfer portal it's obviously a hot button issue right now you see how active it is you see how players are going in left and right when you think about just the possibility of it being part of your future, what comes to mind there? Was it was it any part of your decision? Uh, like the chance portal for next year or stuff? Yeah, well, or just, just eventually down the road. I mean, 30, 40% of kids are you know, um, thinking about it or going in. Time's not going nowhere. So I don't I don't want to think about the chance portal, but, you know, if for God forbid something does happen with the program, then, uh, you know, we'll, you know, get to that point when that time mm -hmm. comes. But, but it didn't but, impact your decision at, at um, this point at all? Yeah, no, no, no. But I knew once I went to there, those guys in the trench portal, they're gonna they're gonna start coming too. Like you like seen, we got a whole offensive line, D lineman, and uh, I don't wanna put this out, but we got we got something good coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna put it out, I'm gonna let him do it himself. You working on recruiting guys too? Oh yeah, the I, I I do I do a little bit of job like hey, just hit me up, we'll talk talk real bit and straight to it. <laughs> so um, that's what I that's what I really like. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, give me your your strangest recruiting tactic that you heard, strangest recruiting pitch that you, you heard. You talked to so many coaches during the process. Strangest recruiting pitch. I had a school, I had a school contact, I had a school contact uh, uh, a girl from a school to try to like be friends with me and kind of lead me towards the school. Okay. Did you know her? Yeah, we were cool. You were yeah, okay. we were cool. But her uncle, uh, her uncle worked for the school, and it was like da da da, like just be nice with him and da da da, like try to make him go there. So I was like, uh, no, I see it through that. I know, I see through that. Too much recruiting going on. Why are we talking about Georgia or like random schools? Like, why are we talking about stuff like that? Okay. That's what, what has Prime told you about like 2025, 2026? Obviously, getting a chance to play with with, with, with Shador and Travis is yeah. Pretty unreal, but like, what? What about after that? I mean, you're, after you're that, a member right? of like what a five or six man recruiting class. What, what's your vision for Colorado after right, that? Right now, I feel like all the recruits are kind of skeptical. You know, like they're going. It's kind of hard to make a decision. Um, come, it's it's kind of good being comfortable. You know, like um, when you go to Georgia, it's like all right, we're gonna win. You know, we're always gonna get guys stuff like that. But when you when you want to step out of being comfortable and be uncomfortable, it's kind of hard to like. Like to do that it's not everybody not everybody can make the uncomfortable decision so i feel like once guys and i'm gonna be a part of that to make this program a comfortable program for people to be like all right yeah he's gonna get guys he's gonna do this do this and that and i want them they just have to see it you know they haven't seen it so it's like you know if you don't see something it's like all right you know like are you copying and stuff like that so i think once more guys see what this program is going to turn to what it's going to look like and the opportunities that you have on and off the field here it's going to be marvelous. Tell me a little bit about your decision day and how all that came about. You were on all these national TV shows, all the all out in LA. You're jumping yeah. around the town. How did all that come about? What was that experience like? Um, being able to talk to those guys were amazing. Um, Rich Eisen, you know, Skip Bayless, all those guys are undisputed. Um, it was actually amazing. Um, being able to just kind of, you know, show that how high I am off the field. You know, not a lot of people. Uh, get the like not a lot of people know your face like off the once you took off the helmet so i feel like being able to just you know showcase the the way i am and just myself just be myself it kind of uh it was kind of amazing for me just being myself and just talking you know mm -hmm. so it was actually an unreal experience though like just just unreal just it was amazing <laughs> i don't even got no words for it it was amazing dog awesome yes sir appreciate it oh